Previously on Lucky Ad Outdoors. Kind of just there right now. <laughs> just dead weight. Oh no! He's what? Off. What? How did, how did that happen? That was constant pressure the whole time, man. He just. Gave So in that spot we tangled with a, a bunch of good fish and we never could get them to the boat and we'd keep them on for a little while and, and lose them. So we moved to a, a different spot and we ended up tangling with one almost the second the bait hit the water. Now I've caught, had a chance to go fishing in Hawaii and I caught a small tuna and I've caught bull reds on light tackle out of Buras and uh, I think this was it was a different fight, but this was probably the biggest fight, fish-wise, I've had in my life. And it just seemed like it would never stop taking line. And every time you'd almost have it, it was uh, it would just go again. And I, I wish I could describe just the sensation of, the, of these giant fish and wrestling them into the boat. He wants to spit the hook, though, badly. Oh, he's go he was going to pre breach. Come on, come on, come on, you big bastard. Yeah. I don't think he's big, though. Too many head shakes. That's right, we need, we need a breach here. Is Are you left-handed when you reel? Because you look like you're kind of awkward reeling. Yeah, you. I'm just feeling awkward. I don't usually use bait cast gear. Oh. I'm used to my spin cast gear. There he is. He's got a little tail flap. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Woo! Keep up with him. Yeah, I'm not used to this. Uh, is he in it? Uh. Yeah, you're underneath it. That's the one good thing about not having that big outboard, though. Yeah. Not to worry about it wrapping up? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't like you. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. There you go. He's taking some drag. He's taking all too much. I just got him out of that reel the first time. <coughs> He's making a hell of a run. I think I just lost all the terrain I gained on him. So what I like to do, I, I, I put the rod down and reel at the same time so it makes it a lot easier to reel and you know, you're not using your too much energy there. I'm so gun shy, I was dropping that rod too. <laughs> He's not coming off now, you got a good one. You jumped him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's got it. 
try to get a double header here. Yeah, you get doubles very much out here? Yeah. yeah. Especially we just threw it down. We got like that know? was immediate. Yeah. That was pretty cool. This was in like five minutes. Come on. How nice they're everywhere. You're gonna have to be our our video our cameraman. Yeah, exactly. We get a double. <laughs> 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 he's not that big. I don't think I saw him jump. He, he's got. He's definitely got some fight in him, though. Yeah. I thought he was broke there for a second, and now he's. Yeah. He came up once voluntarily, and he just doesn't want to do it again. Now these will these fish just like snap off the level line? Is it or do you just what do you mean snap? Well none of yours have level lines on them. Is there I don't know is there a reason that you, you don't Oh no have they those? don't they don't all come these, with them? Yeah they yeah okay. they don't all these big reels they don't have level lines. Uh, oh we, we oh, call them when worm gear. <laughs> I thought I had him. He's not a big fish. This is probably the biggest fish I ever damn <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I bet you get that a lot as a sturgeon guide. I think that halibut I cut still is still my biggest. Hopefully we can end that today. Well, you get the next one because I is a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, I have a that jacket over there, the the camel jacket. Right. You want to put it on because you you won't be able to hold this unless okay. you hug them. So put the camel jacket on and put that rod down. It's a nice, like four and a half foot. And then to get it to the boat and get it up, and I'm looking at a fish that's roughly the same size, weight, and age that I am, and my guide apologizes because it's still just a small fish. It blew me away. Now, throughout the day, we had seen sturgeons come to the surface and kind of flop over and uh, breach. And we had been told going in that sometimes they would come up and, and leap out of the water when they were hooked. And Lang explained that a biologist had told him that this was a form of communication. And we saw it periodically, but we couldn't quite get the fish to do it. And he said, Lang had told us that if you get the hook set and you keep steady pressure on it and they're coming up, chances are you can get them to leap out of the water. And on one of my last fish, you know, we set, got a good hook set and uh, kept the pressure up and he did. He came right up to the boat and he went a full two feet out of the water. And I'm talking of five and a half, six foot fish, 100 plus pounds, leaping two feet out of the water right next to the boat and we had forgotten to turn the camera on and we missed it and we got him up again but we never got any acrobatics and the one fish that we had that uh, that actually breached and, and gave us a good leap we didn't get on video okay we're recording now 
Thanks. That was awesome. That was, awesome. <laughs> that was, that was like a tarpon. Right <laughs> Finally, we got a breacher. Uh, He's going straight down right now. That was awesome. <laughs> Steve's size fish. Come on, why don't you come up? He doesn't want to be at the top. You gotta keep an eye on the mother poles I know, too. Right? <laughs> this spot's been pretty good. This is the third fish. Damn, I should have videoed that. Here he comes. Come to the surface. No. He's not ready he yet. was for a second. It's like every fish and every boat. They get a mess in the boat and they just get angry. I don't know if he's got it in him to, no, to breach anymore. <laughs> that's a decent size yeah, fish. Yeah, it's not going airborne. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. What's his nose look like? He's got a oh, that hole. hole. Got a hole in his nose. Weird. Isn't that weird? It's like so. You know, there's no good way to end this video except for to tell you how amazing of a trip it was. Um, British Columbia is gorgeous. It's like nothing I've ever seen. And the video doesn't do it justice. It seemed like every angle that we were pointing the camera was the wrong one for the scenery. You know, behind us you can see snow-capped mountains and, and mist-shrouded trees. You know, we saw sea lions, we saw sturgeon breaching, we saw, we saw bald eagles cruising around. And, and the whole time in the background of the Canadian, these Canadian mountains with snow-capped peaks, we were, it was cold, it was wet, we got rained on, we got hailed on at one point, and it didn't seem to matter. And I can't say enough good about Lang's fishing adventures, and Lang is a guide himself. I've been on a ton of guided trips, and I've never felt like I got along really well with a guide until this trip. After 10, 15, 20 minutes on the boat, fishing with Lang was like fishing with a really good friend. And we, Lucky Hat Outdoors has never endorsed a product. We've never done an advertisement. We've told you what we use and told you what works to catch fish. But we've never said, you need to go do this. But if you're interested in sturgeon fishing, and if you're interested in going to British Columbia, I can tell you that Lang's Fishing Adventures is the way to go. And here in a minute, I'll throw the URL and the website information up there. So if you want to book a trip and you can, I highly recommend it. Hey, it's Jeremy from Lucky Hat Outdoors, and if you're enjoying our videos, please subscribe to our channel and go ahead and click the like button. And if you have any questions, hit us up in the comments.